Thank you so much. I really appreciate that introduction. Um, but more than that, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to be with you all today. Um, a sincere thanks to the SPAN faculty, to the, the organization, to the association, to all of its members who are here, and to the Small Train Africa team. Um, again, it's a pleasure. So if you just allow me a moment to share my screen. Here we are. So as that introduction explained, I am not a speech therapist nor a cleft and palate provider. I am here before you as the representative of an organization where I've worked for more than a decade and where I've seen firsthand the importance of cleft palate speech therapy and the impact that it's had and that it can have on the life of children, uh, the families of the greater community. So with that, um, and I also wanna make sure that at the end of this, this talk, you're able to take the information that you have received from prior SPAN webinars and take all the information about cleft palate, about, about cleft palate speech, couple that with this information about what is Smile Train, the way that we work, what our programs look like around the world, and then feel empowered to take action. So again, thank you for this opportunity. Today's session will go as follows. I will explain thoroughly Small Train's model, how we work, what is comprehensive cleft care, how are programs in treatment and also in training look today, and again, at the end, talk about how you can feel empowered to get involved. So first, our model. Why have I been here for more than a decade? Why, obviously, I think it's a really special place, but really it's a very different organization, much different from a lot of other organizations that focus on cleft or that work cleft and palate um, or in any other medical condition really around the world. And here's why it's different. Number one, we have one singular focus and that's cleft and palate. We support children from their infancy through their adolescence and even into adulthood if they need care. Two, we are sustainable. Our model is focused on empowering local professionals so that they can provide cleft and palate care locally 365 days a year. And they can do that in their own communities and be their own local heroes. They just need the resources to in order to do so in many cases or training. And a third, another third way about our model is that we're scalable. Because we empower local professionals, that means local professionals are then able to train others. And there is a scalable solution there that then there's more local providers to provide cleft and palate care, access to care uh, over time. And our model is measurable. We've supported and documented more than 1.5 million children to receive free cleft and palate surgery since 1999 when we were founded. We partner with more than 1,100 uh, 1, hospitals and more than 2,000 active cleft professionals that range from surgeons, speech therapists, orthodontists, around the world. And you can see this map where we work. Um, and it's been around 90 countries, over 90 countries where we've worked to date. Um, and there's been thousands of education training opportunities that we've, that we've gotten involved with and that we've organized and supported worldwide. Another really important thing about our model is that our models that we work similar to a business. We use proven systems to be able to efficiently and effectively track the quality of care. So what does this mean? We have protocols and guidelines that go for every treatment grant area that we support. So for surgery, there's a protocol that all of our global partners need to sign in order to say that there's a, there's a standard of care that every patient, no matter where they are around the world, receives and for safe and high quality cleft and palate surgery. For speech therapy, orthodontics, there are guidelines in place. So again, there's a standard of care being provided. And we can use that as a, as a way to track, um, to track the care that we're reporting worldwide. We have more than 50 international and local staff that are on the ground that can visit our local partners and make sure that then the lo our local partner hospitals feel supported, that they feel empowered, that they have everything they need in order to provide the care for the patients. We also have annual surveys and reports that are required by our local partner hospitals and, and cleft professionals. This gives us a a macro level um, picture of how our partners are doing and also micro level information in the reports so that we can continuously uh, adapt our programs, adapt our guidelines, our protocols to make sure they are speaking to the needs on the ground um, and speaking to the needs of our partners. 
and also that we um, were able to then partner with other organizations that can bring in new resources for them. And finally, Small Train Express is, as a quality assurance measure. We're going to talk more about this later, but this is our online medical database that our global partners use in order to report patients who receive support through Small Train grants. Um, it's an essential part of the way that we work and for quality assurance. And again, I'll get more into that later. Another core element of our model is that we're comprehensive, and I'm going to also explain this um, as, with the continue, as the presentation continues. We don't just provide one type of funding. Um, we know that cuff and palate care is not just about surgery. It's not really that simple. There's, it's a whole large puzzle that needs to fit together in order to make sure that patients and families are supported, that they receive the comprehensive care they, they, they actually need, ranging from um, grants to our local partners that cover awareness, uh, to equipment, to education and training, research, um, travel and meal stipends, and then to these essential comprehensive cleft care treatment areas such as speech therapy, orthotics, nutrition support that all come together to yes, for make sure that children receive surgery, which is the most apparent you know, aspect of cleft and palate care, but by no means the only thing necessary. All of these grant programs come together in a comprehensive fashion in our model. Um, this is central to our model. Next, our organization is local. So I talked about how our, our model is about empowering local doctors, that local care is provided 365 days a year. I talked about the reports that are required because we work like a business. And all this feeds into the idea that our organization is, has a local model. So this, these are two different graphs that are from this year's partner survey that goes to all of our global partners, the one, more than 1,100 partner surveys, uh, partners around the world. And this showed that our partners out of all of the different comprehensive cleft care areas from speech therapy to ENT, your nose and throat, more than 70% of our partners identified speech therapy as the most important aspect of their comprehensive cleft care area that they wanted to develop. And also uh, more than 70% of our partners said that they can follow up with more than 50% of their cleft palate patients. Now this is a lot of statistics for one page, but what is this showing us? This is showing us that that really, again, our model is local and that our partners, because they're there 365 days a year, they're, able, they're in the best position to provide local ongoing care for their patients, not just a single surgery, but all these follow-up services, which speech therapy is an essential example of in order to make sure children get the best rehabilitation, the best outcomes, the best life ahead of them. So again, 70% of our partners in this year's partner survey said that speech therapy is their priority area. And you can't say that, oh, children don't come back for speech therapy. According to our partner survey, more than 70% more than 70 of our partners said that more than 50% of their patients um, could come back for speech therapy for an ongoing, um, ongoing care. So that was going through extensively what our model looks like. And in our, if you look at our mission statement as an organization, we say that, again, we're dedicated to children and their families with cleft and palate, making sure they can receive free cleft surgery and comprehensive care. What is comprehensive cleft care? Why is it important? I want to take some time to explain this because speech therapy is an essential part of comprehensive cleft care. So according to Smile Train, this is a, a recent infographic that we just created in order to show in a... Um, in a nice pictorial way, what does comprehensive cleft care really mean? It means all these different treatment areas come together in a circle, in the circle of life for a patient. It's not just um, when they start their life, they get one type of intervention or treatment, and then they get the next, and they follow along, and then it's only speech at one time, only surgery at one time. All these different treatment areas flow in and out of their life, um, throughout their life, and they range from being from covering diagnosis, explaining to the family what is cleft and palate, where does it come from, where are the genetics behind it, feeding nutrition to make sure that new mothers know how to feed their child with a cleft so the child can, can be right on with their developmental standards, be able to grow healthily, steadily, so they can safely get surgery and hit all their, their core developmental markers. Surgery, which for, I think you've learned about this in the past few sessions, but at minimum for the lip, three months, for palate, six months, um, oftentimes even older than that, to be able to close the lip um, for dental care that's throughout their life to so make sure their teeth um, and their oral health is, is, um, is strong. ENT services, because often the cleft palate affects uh, hearing or affects, excuse me, the, the uh, fluid in the ears, which can cause 
oftentimes ear infections. So to make sure that they're being monitored, the children by an ENT, getting ear tubes if necessary. Speech services, which again, you've learned in the last few sessions, making sure early on children and their families are guided about um, how to develop their speech after palate surgery, making sure that all the muscles are working together, the child knows proper placement. And as the child's face grows, that all that continues and their, their speech is strong throughout. Orthodontics, as the child's face grows, oftentimes um, the jaw can get misaligned or the teeth can get misaligned in the area of the cleft, making sure that they have the proper bite, the proper occlusion it's called, to be able to eat properly, speak properly, um, have a, a good quality life. And counseling support, obviously, throughout the child's life. So this is the circle of what comprehensive cleft care, what it means to small train, what it means to, to families affected by cleft. And why is it important? Um, and this is where quality of life comes in. Yes, we can focus on closing a cleft lumen palate, the actual hole that, that occurs um, anatomically, but that's not just it. We need, again, this comprehensive approach in order to provide care for these children. So for nutrition programs, why is nutrition an essential element of comprehensive cleft care? If you look at the picture on the top left, I actually personally took that picture. It's of a baby who's a year and a half um, years old with still an open cleft lumen palate and the baby's still not able to sit up, definitely cannot stand, um, is not make, really making too many, uh, not really creating many words or, or babbling. Um, it's because the baby has fallen behind dramatically um, in their developmental markers because they are malnourished, because right from the beginning, the mother wasn't guided and how to properly feed the baby with the cleft. The baby struggles to eat because of not being able to make proper closure around a bottle or around a nipple. Um, and because of that has fallen behind. So obviously the idea of, of, of not providing nutrition programs, nutrition services to that family can as a serious uh, effect on the quality of life of that patient, of that baby and their family. So for speech therapy, why does that have an effect on quality of life? I think everyone probably in this chat um, understands this, but the idea of having a hypernasal voice or unintelligible speech um, you know, that how much that has an effect on the child being able to communicate at home, in their community, at school, and then how that then trickles into their ability to be a productive human being throughout their life. And I think probably from the prior sessions, you have heard examples of what cleft palate speech can sound like. Um, but I do have a video here that I can just quickly play so you have an understanding again about what it could sound like and what that effect is on the quality of life, because really many of these words are not intelligible um, for the child. Your turtle ate a heart. Do it today for dad. A cookie or a cake. Give Aggie a hug. A fly fell off a leaf. George saw Gigi. So I, I, I hope that gives you a picture. I mean, so many of the sentences were intelligent, you know, you could understand, especially if you're familiar with the child, maybe what they're trying to say. But again, you can see the quality of life impact, that lack of access to speech therapy for that, that not being able to do that comprehensive approach for care, how that can impact this child's life um, for the long term. And then when it comes to orthodontics or in dental health, if you could look at this picture um, where the area of the cleft, you could see there are oftentimes misshapen teeth, additional teeth, the teeth can grow into the cleft area. Um, and this is even after a very good quality cleft palate surgery. It's just the child needs to be able to receive access to an ongoing dentist, perhaps an orthodontist, because as their face grows, as the tissues continue to grow, uh, as their face grows, as the tissues begin to conform then around where the cleft was repaired, um, the teeth can come in in new, in new locations. And also where the cleft was joined here, um, there's no bone. And so if the child actually wants to have a, a tooth in the spot, um, so when they smile, they can see a full, a, a full smile of teeth, they're going to need to receive additional surgery and but be prepared for that through orthodontics. And I'm not sure if that was explained in prior sessions, but there is a really important elements of orthodontics and dental care that are essential for the quality of life of these children. You can imagine if they didn't receive that kind of care, the teeth are in the way of where the tongue is supposed to be for speech. So this affects speech. Um, it probably, it likely affects their ability to chew um, and to eat properly. So there's a lot of a quality of life uh, and probably pain um, and discomfort as well if the teeth are not managed well.
Europe. And so the goal of comprehensive cleft care, no one's perfect in life. No one has perfect symmetry. No one has perfect per speech or pitch or, or hearing. But the goal for all these patients and for everyone is to be able to have um, the child be happy, that adolescents be happy with their outcomes. They have good, good symmetry. They, have, they can hear within good range. They can their, their speech is being able to be understood by others. Um, that they have an attractive smile, they have healthy structures um, in their mouth, and then most importantly, really uh, many times is their good self-esteem. So this is the goal of that picture of conference of cleft care, and this is where Smotrin is really dedicated to not just supporting the surgery, but to supporting this entire circle of care so patients they can get this outcome, this smile um, in their adolescence, in their in their later in their in, the, in their adult years. This timeline document um, is actually trying to show pictorially what comprehensive cleft care, how it could actually look for a patient when they come to receive cleft and palate curl early on to a treatment center, and if the treatment center has all the, the, the areas available. So that's again going back to that circle. The blue is surgery, so you could see where surgery can come in and out of their life at multiple times. The red is dental care, so you can see how oral health um, guidance and dental care needs to be throughout the life. The purple is speech, um, the green is orthodontics, and I can go in, but all this ties back to that original circle, and now I can break it out by age group, so you can see it a bit more clearly. So for early life, we have speech therapy in every single one of these um, breakouts of, of age groups. So for early life to about 18 months, you can see it's recommended that children receive, or the families receive, speech and language development guidance so that parents understand how to guide their, their children in babbling and early sounds and early language development. It's important that, um, for example, maybe papa or, or dada, with, it, and dada is a word that, as you'll know, is something that maybe cuff palate patients are going to have trouble saying um, because the way that the tongue hits the roof of the mouth. But it's important there could be early guidance and how to tell the family it's okay if they say dada um, with, in this certain way because they can't make the pressure with their tongue properly, but still have them have that proper placement. So then after cleft palate surgery, the tongue's still in the right place and it's easier for the child to begin to communicate clearly. There are things like that with early language and speech development that are important in this stage of life. And then in childhood, again, we see around three years old, um, three to five years old, it's recommended that children with cleft palate are seen for speech therapy, along with all these other treatment areas, comprehensive cleft care areas. I'm just pointing out speech for, for this particular group. Um, and that's where we can really have effective speech therapy and really make sure that children have proper placement, um, have proper articulation so that they don't have then any speech disorder as they grow through their childhood and into their adolescence. And then for the final stage, early adolescence and early adulthood and on, um, we do say that then again, speech comes into play at about 17 years old or older in case the child has any jaw issues or jaw surgery, um, because at that point, there could be some implications for speech um, that come back if the alignment of the jaw is moved. Um, again, children can receive speech therapy at any point throughout their life. These three particular areas though, or if you hit them at those particular areas, which are early on, um, you could really be able to prevent disability um, throughout, you know, for, throughout their life. Obviously though, if they don't come at three years old, they can still get effective therapy when they're seven, eight, um, 10 years old, but the idea is to get them early and to be able to prevent any sort of disability or quality of life effects. So that was explaining comprehensive cleft care. Next section is to talk about our treatment programs. And before I go into our treatment programs, I do want to call out specifically the Small Train West Africa team. That if it wasn't for them, uh, these programs would not be growing at the rapid rate that they are throughout the region. So it's NK, Dr. Nicole, Nina, Beckett, um, Victoria, all of you have done an excellent job with prioritizing comprehensive cleft care, specifically cleft palate speech therapy programs. Um, it's really exciting to see how much they've grown over the years. And for Small Train, um, as you can see from this chart, it's still a growing area for us. We've support, started supporting cleft palate speech therapy programs in 2013 about, and as since then they've grown um, steadily. Um, it was pilot programs at first, but now they're really in full-on programs. We're active in 23 countries, speech therapy programs specifically, in West, West Africa and throughout seven countries. Um, in Nigeria, in Nigeria, obviously, it's just in one country, but you could see the numbers of speech professionals that are involved in the program. 
um, how many reported assessments and treatments they're providing. All that information is from Smotrin Express, our online medical database, uh, the number of patients. So I really, I could show a year over year chart and perhaps I can enter that for next time we all get together, but it's really been growing quite rapidly over the years. And, but we do still have a long while to go because in you know, Smotrin we've worked in over 90 countries, over 1.5 million um, children. Not all those children have cleft palate, um, but you know many of them do, and so these numbers are, are growing and they're great, but we still have a lot of work to do to make sure there's access to cleft palate speech therapy. So what does our treatment program really mean though? Like what, what does it do? So our treatment program means that there's funding available. Um, and what does that funding actually go towards? So the funding can go towards supporting the space where the speech therapy is provided, for any supplies that are necessary, such as games, um, for materials for children to take home, support for the actual speech therapist so they can be part of the cleft limb palate team, support for patient travel, um, the transportation costs to and from ongoing therapy, and if there's any equipment um, for ongoing assessments and monitoring, such as a microphone, camera stand, and it could even get more sophisticated, such as in nasometers or nasoendoscopes. So then it goes into when we actually give a grant, what are the expectations around the center having supplies and resources? We can fund some of these supplies and resources, but what needs to be there in order for Small Train to say that this is a program that we want to fund? And this ties back to our guidelines that we have as a protocol in place for, um, for speech, cuff palate speech programs. There's a dedicated space, there's capacity to take video or audio recordings, because that's essential for recording results in our, in our online medical database, Small Train Express. There's a dedicated desktop for reporting or, or laptop. There's books, writing materials to use during, during therapy. There are dental mirrors. There's therapy logs. And it's not required, but it can be encouraged, especially as the speech therapy program progresses, that there's access to certain assessment tools, such as a nasoendoscope or a nasometer. And again, these are things that we can fund through the budgets that we award, um, but this is what's expected in the protocol that's available or working towards being available for the last two for the assessment tools. I did want to mention um, two innovative, different types of speech therapy programs um, that have existed. So traditionally, as you all are familiar, speech therapy happens on a, a weekly or bi-weekly basis for children. They come to and from where the therapy is being provided. Um, some, in some places right now, telehealth is leveraging um, using online therapy, which is a great, a great alternative, especially right now. Um, and there's also, there are many centers do a camp. So the idea where uh, so excuse me, so these are two different areas where I want to explain that just more innovative and perhaps could be helpful for the region as well. Um, the idea of doing camps. So that's when children are not in school, they're on vacation from school, they have the opportunity to come to a few days in a row, or it could be a week, it could be two weeks, it could be a month, um, and where small train could support their transportation, even their housing to stay nearby if they're from very far away, to be in a camp-like environment. And this has really been very beneficial um, in a couple of key countries where, where we've seen it being used um, because it makes the children have a social interaction with other children who are affected by cleft palate. They see it's not just them alone that's affected. Some of their therapy can be in group, some of it can be individual. Um, games and fun uh, interactions can be incorporated. And there, there is some research that shows this type of intensive model that could be all day for subs, um, subsequent days in a row actually has similar outcomes um, than what if you compare to a child coming every week for three months, six months, a year. So it's a, it's a nice opportunity, especially where there are challenges for children with transportation, um, with the commitment of the family to be able to go come back and forth. And that's something that has been used in West Africa um, some, but it's another idea, another type of treatment model that can be scaled. Another type of treatment, pro, um, another type of program which is relatively innovative and on a small scale is the idea of leveraging choirs, so that you get children together and you um, and they're either working towards putting on some sort of a concert, some sort of a show in their local communities, which builds their self-esteem. Again, social interactions with other children with cleft, um, but that there's a speech therapist involved with the choir, so that as they're practicing different songs um, or interacting with one another, that speech therapist is guiding. The, the children in, in proper placement and proper articulation. There's still yet to be additional research in and how song and, and singing can actually play into speech. Um, and Smile Train you know, is very interested in this, but the, at the time being, at least, the idea of having a choir 
where um, the very a very basic level the speech therapist can be there helping the children even as they speak to one another um, as they begin to practice songs is, is really a fun a fun alternative for a treatment program so how do we monitor quality of these of these treatment programs Sumatran Express comes into play so that's the online medical database we require an assessment record and a treatment report every three months of the children who are enrolled in the program but also before that even that reporting takes place in order for the for the speech therapists and the local program to be able to apply for funding they have to show that there is um, a certain level of training a certain level of of understanding already um, in place and that's where we leverage um, the training programs which i'm going to talk about next it, how the professionals have done during those training programs if they've been recommended by the trainer they've passed the final exam then they can actually receive the funding so it's a first level for quality control then we have small train express and then we also have on-site audits that happen um, perhaps audits is a strong term you can also just call them as local visits where uh, a very strong trainer in the region can visit can see the local program in action can give any look at difficult cases with the speech therapist and support them to be able to say um, maybe when certain aspects of treatment or assessments need to be improved or can be can be continuously developed because as professionals we all have always room um, for for development and of course another aspect of quality control is is mentoring so when we look at the records in Sumatran Express um, and we see the outcomes that are being reported, we look at, okay, which maybe, which professional needs additional mentoring or additional training opportunities? Or, and again, even if there's, even if everything looks fine, Small to Express, the idea to continue to offer training opportunities for the speech therapists involved in our treatment programs is extremely important, just for their overall gro growth as professionals and engagement in the program. And this is a snapshot looking at uh, typical Sumatran Express record. This young girl, you could see she has had different surgeries, um, different a speech assessment and different treatment reports that are being updated. And as this child then continues to get comprehensive cleft care, we can see different aspects, orthodontics perhaps, additional surgeries, all together in one record. So you can see the full picture of comprehensive cleft care this child's receiving. Mom. No. Continue on just for the um, respective time. So training programs. Um, we would like to begin this training program section just by, by introducing a short video from an essential partner that we've had throughout the years, Dr. Kate Crowley, who's the founder of Leaders Project um, and the director of the Bilingual Speech Therapy Institute at Columbia University Teachers College. I'm going to quickly just fix my screen so you can see this video. Hi, my name is Kate Crowley, Professor of Practice here at Teachers College, Columbia University in New York City. This is a short video showing our online, free, cleft palate speech and feeding video tutorial. Thanks. You know, we know it from she, what she just did. She can create the sound, and that means she can create every single sound. And all we need now is speech there. As you will see in this course, the teaching is closely integrated with real-world examples of assessment and treatment of speech and feeding issues for children and adults born with cleft palate. The course has some focus on international and multilingual practices because it was developed both for people in high-resource countries like the U.S. and also for people living in communities where few, if any, resources are available for cleft palate, speech, and feeding. When you finish the course, you can demonstrate your knowledge and skills through the online multiple choice assessment. If you pass that with 80% accuracy, a certificate of completion will be sent to your email. We challenge you to pass that test. This entire course is available at leadersproject.org. I hope you find it useful in your work. Just one moment, I'm just gonna share my screen once again. Um, okay. 
coming right up. <laughs> so that video um, was a snippet from, again, Dr. Kate Crowley from Leaders Project, Columbia University, Teachers College, Columbia University. She's been an essential partner of Smile Train over the years and her model of her of her training program of her training institute has been a cornerstone of the training programs in west africa um, which has really helped drive the growth of the treatment programs we've already discussed as she mentioned in her presentation um, in her video when people take her online or in-person training program at the end of it there's an exam and if you pass the exam, that's one of the first things from Smile Train that we say, okay, we are ready to support you, invite you to apply um, as a Cleveland Palette team with this professional who's passed to receive. Breath. Okay, I don't think I'm muted anymore. I hope you can see this. Um, here we are, excuse me, I'm sorry for the technical dip. Here we are, okay, great. So this is a slide from the partner survey. Um, again, the one that I mentioned earlier on the presentation about what conference of, this is from our partner survey this year, what conference of cleft care disciplines do you have available on your team today? Whether or not Small Train funds them, what is available on your team? The red shows the response from 2014, and the blue shows the response from 2020. And this first area of the graph here is, um, is the response for speech therapy. As you can see, about 25% of our partners in 2014 said that they had speech therapy available on their cleft team, again, funded or not by Small Train. And now this year, more than 60% of our partners report they do a speech therapy part of their cleft team. And this, a lot of this is because of our, tra our training programs. As we, as we empower more local professionals to train, to host local trainings, to run local trainings, oftentimes mentored by expert trainers like Kate Crowley, but then there's, but when someone locally is, is seen as an expert, then that continues to, to, um, to roll forward and to move forward into more people being trained. You can see how much this grows local capacity. So this is a picture from an early training um, with Kate Crowley's uh, training institute from 2000. This is in Ghana from many years ago. And we're actually, um, the program there, there's an expert trainer now in Ghana uh, because of the relationship that Kate has managed and worked with there. Um, and there's many of our trainings have, have occurred in Ghana and many excellent cleft palate um, therapists have come out of those trainings and now are being supported with their own local programs. So what is this institute, this training program through Kate Crowley? There's an online program, as she mentioned in that video. It's available in French, excuse me, in English and in Spanish, and French is coming soon. And the course is accredited by American Speech and Hearing Association. Um, and it is uh, it's an excellent resource, and we encourage anyone to check it out. Um, and you can check, you can use, you can actually just view any of the modules independently, or you can watch them all together and then take the final exam, or you can just take the final exam without even taking the modules, um, whatever is appropriate for your skill level. And again, available in English and Spanish through the support of Smile Train and French is on the horizon. Uh, another, so that's one aspect, the online, the online materials and tests. There's also a train the trainer manual and all of the presentations um, available for download so that if there is an expert local trainer, they can download all those materials and run a training course themselves. Um, this picture here is from a local training that occurred um, in person in Nigeria, and this was in 2018, I believe, where there's since been another one in, in Nigeria as well. Um, and many of these participants are now uh, the cornerstone of the cleft palate speech therapy program um, in Nigeria and in West Africa. So since 2016, um, Small Train supported 16 of these tra in-person trainings with Kate Crowley. Um, six have been in West Africa, two specifically Nigeria, and they have touched um, more than about 250 uh, speech therapists. We continue. We hope to continue to have these grow. And these are some of the countries where professionals um, have come from from these trainings. Excuse me, these were the trainings were actually hosted in red. 
Another important aspect of the of the training um, elements from Teachers College Leaders Project are these storybooks, and they are actually featured in the video as well. Smash Trains help put them into coloring books as a way for children to take them home and to play with them. But these storybooks um, focus on specific cleft palate sounds, and the sounds are very extremely isolated in the books. So they're really important practice tools for children to use at home. Um, they're, they can be nicely printed and bound, so it gives the family something something definite, something um, secure to bring home and to, to take seriously as part of their cleft palate speech. On the right here is a game board, again, something that can be printed in color, in laminated, something that could be used during therapy for the therapist to use to guide the therapy with the child, or it can be something the child takes home. Um, and again, there's different game boards per cleft palate sound. And Kate Crowley has worked extensively with, with many people in in Nigeria and throughout West Africa, throughout the world, to make these different games and storybooks um, in all many different languages so that they're a resource. They're all available on the Leaders Project website um, and also Smile Trains looking to get them posted on our website as well. But you can always reach out um, in order to get access to these materials. And finally, um, another important training element from Smile Train is that early on, 2001, we created a virtual surgery CD where it, it showed a virtual child, um, two different children, one with a unilateral cleft lip and palate, another one with a bilateral, going through surgery. And the simulator was, it was really innovative, it was first of its kind, it showed all different surgical techniques in order to approach these, these different types of cleft. Now, as years have gone on, it went from a CD to then a new edition for a DVD, and then in 2009, it was launched as an online simulator. Since then, we've also um, made it so that you can download it and you don't have to use it online in case that you have bandwidth issues. You can download different modules. Uh, most recently, we did add additional content related to speech therapy, speech therapy surgery, velopharyngeal dysfunction, um, but also just the anatomy and showing and how speech actually impacts, or how, excuse me, the cleft impacts speech. So this is all available online for free. Um, and it's, an, it's another extremely important education and training tool that Small Train has leveraged for uh, empowering more cleft palate speech professionals worldwide. And I spoke a lot about Kate Crowley and Leaders Project. Of course, I should mention that there are other excellent trainers um, worldwide that we have, we have used as mentors for our local cleft teams. Um, and there's hopefully going to be even more of them in West Africa and, and throughout the Af um, Africa that can be used. And maybe the, some of this content from, from Leaders Project can then be more localized and, and even adapted. Um, but it's, again, that her program has been a great basis. Um, and we have other program examples from other regions as well. So what next? Just to sum up this entire presentation, um, from your prior from your prior webinars about cleft lip and palate, about cleft palate speech, hopefully by now you realize at the end of this webinar series, the cleft is common and it's not complicated, um, there, but the child does need effective care. And so effective targeted care um, in a comprehensive manner can really change their life. Um, it can really, it can avoid unnecessary quality of life um, uh, negative quality of life factors. It can really positively affect their productivity, um, their quality. And Smile Train, we have a model that is effective. Um, it's about it's empower, empowering local professionals. They can provide care on an ongoing basis. And our model is um, is quite different and again quite effective. And so we want to, after understanding all of that, we want you then to familiarize yourself with the resources that are available to you. The Teachers College, the Leaders Project Teachers College website, leaders.org has many resources from books to, to games, to online training programs in different languages um, that are free and available for you to be able to develop your understanding of cleft palate speech. Um, Smile Train, we also have grant programs that also pro to provide funding to teams so that a therapist can be part of that team and provide effective therapy. And the ways to get involved is spreading the word, looking for more opportunities to get involved with SPAN, um, maybe even helping to develop new resources in, in local languages, and of course, with staying in touch with Small Train. And this specifically the West Africa team who's on this call, um, but you know, always um, Small Train's globally um, one large family, and, and we're eager to, um, to stay in touch. So, thank you. That um, ends my presentation, and I look forward to hearing from all of you with any questions, concerns, 
Um, and if we run out of time, as was mentioned in the beginning of the session, you can always reach out um, to Smile Train, to me specifically, again, to our West Africa team for more information. Thank you very much for the presentation. We have um, some questions here. Sorry. No problem, take your time. Oh. I can't view the questions. Um, let me see is there anything you can do to help with that? I can't access the questions through the chats. Um. Hello, patients. Can you, are you able to see the questions? Okay, yes, I can see them now. Great. Well, I have access to just three questions. Just scroll, scroll down. I think there are more questions. Just the one from Amina Ibrahim. I don't know what happened to my system. I can only view three questions from this end. Okay. okay. Three questions. Let me see if I could uh, jump in here. Um, that was a great presentation, Pam. Thank you. Uh, we have a couple of questions. Great. Um, the first question says, first, is our dental care limited to cleft patients? I'm going to take them in batches of three because it seems that we have a number of questions here. Mm-hmm. Is our dental care limited to cleft patients? Mm -hmm. Then the second question is, what is the protocol for orthodontic treatments? Are there any age limits? Mm -hmm. Another question is, please, what is the difference between secondary palate repair and VPD surgery? Mm -hmm. And when is VPD surgery required? Mm -hmm. I think you can take those first three and then we can batch sure. another. You got it. So is our dental care limited to cleft patients? And yes, it is. As mentioned in the beginning, our organization, the funds that we, that we raise from generous donors around the world, it, it is to be focused only on children with cleft. So the idea that we make sure that children with cleft have access to oral health guidance, to um, entry level preventative dental care, um, and then as they get older, as necessary orthodontic care, um, that is something that's only right only through our programs accessible to cleft patients. But as we train more dental providers, dental surgeons, um, that is something that while we're training them with the primary focus for that, them to impact the lives of children with cleft, of course it improves the quality of care and the access of, that they have to resources. For their broader practice and that's the same thing that goes with even the surgeons the nurses the anesthesiologists even the speech therapists the more we invest in these local in local professionals in um, in trainings in access to supplies and equipment the more it empowers them to be able to then have their own their own resources to then grow their own practices to grow their skills to then be able to provide better care for even patients beyond cleft limb palate second question is what is the protocol for orthodontics? So um, children with orthodontics in many places, I'm going to speak from the U.S., um, they can have orthodontics like practically their entire childhood. Their entire childhood. Um, they can get very complicated orthodontics and interventions um, throughout their life. It's very expensive. And for Smile Train, we had to take a, uh, we had to look, take a look at, okay, what are the most um, impactful and effective stages of orthodontics? That are and also the simplest, the most um, the most effective, the biggest bang for your buck um, for the orthodontics that we can fund. Because we, if we want to be sustainable as an organization, we need to think about the idea of scaling all these programs and that what is that cost going to look like. 
So we can't fund orthodontics for every patient their entire life. It has to be at very specific stages of their life and it has to be for very specific purposes. So our orthodontic program, we fund three different specific stages of care. One is the infant level orthodontic, which is, which is really called orthopedics, which is when oftentimes children get um, some sort of a, a retainer or an obturator in the roof of their mouth to cover their, their cleft palate. And there's research that shows that, that, that as the, this retainer, this obturator um, is in the child's mouth, as they suckle, and that, that massaging, that, that back and forth massaging, that can actually help stimulate the growth of the tissues and make the cleft palate opening smaller. There's also tape that goes across the lip. Um, and there's also different apparatuses that can go on the nose to lift the nose. And all of this is to try and bring the cleft smaller when the baby is very small. Um, when the baby is still very malleable, if there's more um, cartilage as opposed to bone, things are still very movable before cleft palate surgery or cleft lip surgery. So that's the first stage of orthodontics that we fund. And it's for specific uh, for number of months prior to the primary surgery. The next stage of orthodontics that we fund is for mixed dentition when the child's between like, um, if you say six to 10 years old, all this is a range because it depends on the child's individual development. And that is preparing the child for alveolar bone graft, which is the surgery where bone from the hip is brought up to the, the alveolus, the gum line, so that the lar so that the big tooth can actually grow down. So there's actually bone there for either a tooth to be able to grow down or for um, uh, some sort of an implant to be put there. And in the orthodontics to prepare that patient for the surgery is usually about a year or could be longer, but could, small train wants to focus on about a year before where there's um, the teeth are need to be aligned and a lot of times the, the arch of the, of the um, child's palate needs to be expanded. And finally, the last stage of orthodontics that we fund um, is when it's permanent addition, all, all big teeth, and when there's some serious bite occlusion issues or alignment issues that affect the quality of life of the patient, and we are willing to support um, the orthodontics for that, for that adult or for that adolescent with, with permanent dentition. And that stage of care is more flexible um, as far as the age intervention that can come in. Um, ideally, it's something that you know, the, children, the people get access to in their teenage years, but if people don't have access their entire life to these orthodontics and they come in as an adult and they really need this type of help, we, we don't want to turn them away. So that's the, that's the orthodontics. It's not limited to children. It does go into adulthood. Um, we do try and have, be very targeted because we want to be sustainable and scalable. Um, it is expensive treatment. And the last question is, what's the difference between secondary palate repair versus VPD? When is VPD necessary? So Smile Train, um, we for many years called um, any sort of, we, we had this term secondary palate repair, and that was something that was kind of a catch-all for when a child um, didn't have good speech and needed a VPD surgery. Also, maybe if there were fistulas or if, there were, if the palate at all was breaking down the original surgery and they had to get a second, a second palate surgery. Um, it's not really that technical of a term. It really should just be VPD surgery. And if it's a fistula, it should be a fistula surgery. So in recent years, actually it was this a year ago about, we updated Smotrin Express and we changed, we got rid of the term secondary palate surgery. And now it's either VPD surgery or fistula surgery. And VPD surgery in very basic terms, um, is when the muscles, the, the velopharyngeal muscles, um, do not close properly at the back of the throat, and that, that could be because of this, the way that the cleft palate surgery healed. There's scar tissue, so everything things constricted, it's constricted, and um, the palate's actually not long enough. All the muscles don't hit at the back of the throat enough to be able to to join, and then be able to make enough closure for clear speech. I am not a speech therapist. I'm not a surgeon, so this is very non-technical way to explain it. And so when Sarah, so, but, but in essence, that's the way I understand it. Um, and the way that surgery is needed when the speech therapist and the surgeon come together and they do um, some sort of an, an assessment and an examination, there's a, the speech therapist can do um, an actual speech assessment and then they can use a nasoendoscope or you can use um, a video fluoroscopy to be able to visualize all the muscles at the back of the throat, how they interact with a child speaking and they can make a decision, are the muscles not being able to come together enough? Do they need to be reconfigured through surgery? 
Um, I probably have surgeons on the line that can explain it better than that, but I hope that's a very a simple enough, um, basic enough explanation as to support. Um, but I do encourage there are chapters and more information about this in our virtual surgery simulator, and of course through um, Kay Curley's Leaders Project um, video tutorials as well. So NK, if there are more questions, I'm ready. Yeah, thank you so much, Pam. I don't know if uh, patients is able to see those questions now. Uh, patients, if are you able to, or do I continue? Please continue. I still can't access the questions. Okay, that's fine. Um, thank you, Pam, for the answers. I, we have a lot, we have a couple of questions. Um, one is, are there plans in the future for small train to help speech partners to establish speech labs? Okay. Then another question is, the person would like to know more about the online training in French. Is mm -hmm. it now available, the three months course? Mm -hmm. Another question is, um, please, can you elaborate more on the mentorship program? Great question. Thank you. Okay, so the plans for small train to develop and support new speech labs. I'm not sure I completely understand that, but I, I think that just means the idea of opening new centers that are just focused on speech. So that would be outside of a hospital where the speech, where the surgery and the entire team is, is um, focused. I mean, really, small train is flexible and we're comprehensive. That was something that I explained early on when we talked about our model. Um, depending on what's needed and what's the norm and what's um, what will work in a particular country, I think that our local managers usually are very open to that. So the ideal would be that a speech therapist is part of a comprehensive cleft care team where they're all together in a hospital and a unit that they meet regularly and everyone is all the different cleft professionals are involved in making this time, you see this timeline up on the screen, that all of them are involved in making sure the timing of the assessments and the treatments for a particular patient are all being considered and weighed and, 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 and planned together. Uh, that's the ideal. But if that's not feasible, that's not possible for a particular region um, because there's not enough space in the hospital or the hospitals don't prioritize there being a team, that the professionals are more decentralized um, and the idea that a speech labs would be necessary so that children who get surgery at one place can be all re-referred to a lab um, and get therapy there on an ongoing basis. If that's what's if that's what's going to be ideal for that particular region, then I'm I'm sure that there would be um, openness by our local managers to be able to work on that. Um, creating them from scratch, I, I'm not I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not sure how, how much investment that would take. And again, if that was the priority for that particular region, it would all be weighed together. Um, but it's a good idea. You know, we talked about innovations through the choirs, through camps. If that's an innovation that would make access to care better for patients, that's something that should be considered. Um, but it's all, again, would be weighed by our local managers um, and, 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 and given the local scenario. Second question was the online training in French. Small train um, so has been supporting Dr. Kate Crowley at Leaders Project to, uh, to create these materials in French, and she's been working on them for a few years. Um, I, she's very busy, and she's, um, I know, really interested and really dedicated to making sure these are finished. I've heard from her that they're really almost there. I think there was a few more videos that she was trying to get finished. Um, and what Kate likes to do is, Dr. Crowley likes to do is to have local professionals be able to, to be able to speak during the videos. Um, and I think there's just a few more that she was waiting on, but they're almost there. And I promise as soon as they're ready, we will spread the word very loudly um, and very clearly worldwide so that you get your first hand to get them. If there's a particular module in French that you really need right now, that you really want right now, please write to us because maybe Kate, Dr. Crowley does have that module available and we could just send that to you individually, okay? And then the third thing is expanding about the mentorship program. Um, often what happens is that we, Sumatran supports a trainer to provide a training, right? A one week training. And it's not really about that one week training only. There's about, there's time after the training where the trainees want to all be together on a WhatsApp group and they want to all communicate about um, about their difficult cases or about what they learned and applying it right on. And so um, what we've tried to do worldwide is as we support, as we organize different one-week trainings, that we also give funding to the trainer 
to be able to then have time to do mentor the people after. Um, and if that trainer isn't available, then identifying somebody else that has the experience and giving and actually supporting their time so they can dedicate that set time towards um, professionals who need additional support. So it's a it's a new program. Um, it's being it's been piloted a couple of places around the world. And if there's people that are interested in being mentored, and that's something that you that they'll take very seriously, um, we'd love to hear from you and see how we can um, support that type of opportunity. But right in, in many times, at least through Dr. Kate Crowley, the mentoring has been more informal in the WhatsApp groups. Um, but as far as more formal mentoring, small training, it, it is really important to us to make sure, especially for the programs that are being funded. Um, they have it that, that, that people have a kind of access to a resource. Great. Great. Thank you so much, Pam. Um, I'm going to ask the last batch of questions. Okay. And then we wrap up. Great. The question says, Dear Pam, what are your expectations from the partnership with SPAN being VP CCC, being Vice President Comprehensive Cleft Care at Smile Tree? And the second question says, please, how accessible is the train the trainer's speech manual? Can you give the link for this? Mm -hmm. And the last or the second to the last question on this batch is, is there any chance for you to increase the speech therapy duration from three months due to the fact that single patient may have multiple speech challenges? And lastly, can children with cleft palate alone benefit from the orthodontic grant? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll try and go through quickly. I know we only have a minute. So uh, maybe I'll start from the bottom up. Okay, so the cleft palate only, yes, they can benefit from the orthodontic program, absolutely, from any of those three stages of care. It's particularly for the mixed and permanent dentition if their gum line is also affected. Well, I guess if it's cleft palate only, oftentimes the gum line isn't is it affected but um, their arch of their mouth would be and, and of course when they're an infant getting access to the obturator or the retainer would be really important to help them with feeding so yes they can benefit from that um, would we be open to th ex grow, uh, expanding or excuse me lengthening the three-month update requirement so just so you all know when in Sumatra Express our online medical database when a child enters a speech therapy program we ask that um, the speech assessment is loaded to Sponsor Express. So we see the child was initially assessed for their therapy needs. And then every three months, a treatment report is, is given. Um, I don't think that there's much flexibility around the three months because it's not that we, we expect the child to be done in three months. We just want to see how they're doing. And um, maybe that's, and we know that there is a large reporting burden on the speech therapist. That's why we want to make sure we take that time for reporting into consideration. We give the budget, we award the budget. But um, in order for us to be accountable to donors, we need to be able to show that, they're, that the child is getting therapy and that there's a progress check-in. Again, there's no expectation the child needs to be done with their therapy goals um, every three months. It's just that there should be some sort of progress to be able to report. Um, I'm saying that at a very high level. Of course, if this is something that's coming from many therapists that they want to be able to show progress every four months, every five months, um, maybe this is something we can continue to talk about. But for right now, I think that the three months is a, is a standard globally. That's important for us to be able to just be able to keep a maintenance on the progress of care. How accessible is the manual? Um, yes, that could be emailed um, very easily. Um, and it, all the PowerPoints, everything that goes with it. So if you're interested in receiving um, the train the trainer materials, please reach out directly and we can get that to you. And then finally, which was the first question, but I'd like to end on it, is the expectations um, of, with SPAN. I think Smaltern is extremely, well, we're honored by the affiliation, um, the association, and we're just so excited about it because it's something that has recently you know, been signed and recently been, been going to take off. Uh, my expectation really is that, you know, that, you, that we come together to be a voice around, um, to really spreading the word around what is cleft and how children with cleft palate need access to therapy and that we're here for them and that you all can be the, the guiding light of, you know, being able to be trained the next generation of therapists that can be support for these families. Um, but I think also just spreading the awareness about access to therapy, that it's something that the child doesn't have to live with this, this disability their entire life, 
I think that's going to be really important, a really high, ex really important expectation that I have um, that we come together with. And I hope that that aligns well with, um, with Span's expectations. Um, and I would love to be able to ask that question of Span, you know, what are your expectations of Smile Train? Um, but maybe we should take that offline. I don't know if there's enough time um, or if patients, if, if you'd like to speak on that. But again, we're honored by the affiliation and the association, and we're just really eager for this to be um, a kickstart for you being the trainers um, for the next generation and helping us spread the word. So, thank you so much. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I don't know if uh, Professor Ade Mokaya has a final word as we wrap up the Telecleft's online speech series in collaboration with SPAN. Uh, Professor Demo Kaya, are you there? Would you want to say the final word? Okay, while we're waiting for him, I would like to say a very big thank you to all our participants. It's been a five week journey of learning, networking, knowing different protocols, different techniques and knowing how important speech therapy is to the quality of care we provide to our cleft patients. Thank you so much. We are still very open. Anytime you have questions, you can send us email or reach us on our social media handles. I uh, will be there to attend to you. And most importantly, tomorrow we continue with um, the celebration of the International Month of Hearing and Speech. Uh, by this time, 11 a.m. tomorrow, we'll all advise to connect and we'll be um, celebrating the International Month of Hearing and Speech. The theme would be Better Hearing and Speech in Nigeria. Professor Demokoyo, are you, are you in now? If you're in, please, can we hear your voice? Thank you, yeah, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I like to say on behalf of the Speech Pathologist and Audiologist Association in Nigeria, we appreciate our lecturer uh, today, um, Dr. Pamela. We thank you very much for what you are doing for our profession and also what you are doing to put smile on many faces. We appreciate you, we love you. I want to say please continue in this good endeavor. Um, we are with you and we continue to work with you. We hope for better and wonderful working relationship. Thank you very much. To everybody, thank you, God bless you. Thank you.